uh, RSC EU Season 6 tonight for Match 2 of the night and the last one, I believe, as well. We have a game in the Challenger League. Together with me doing double duty as a caster and as a broadcaster, there's Sanji in the booth. Hello, my man. How are you doing? Hello, everybody. We have a game between Astro and Spark with a lot of uh, interesting things going on in the week in the past few days uh, for Spark and one of the casters of the league as well, Buddha, playing in the Astro team. So there's plenty to discuss about and I'll let you do the honor to introduce whatever team you like. Um, well, let's introduce both those teams through standings, <laughs> uh, through stats. And here we clearly see um, we've got basically two of the best teams in um, Challenger at the moment. Obviously, Nezuko Gang is the one superpower in Challenger um, who just rose above everything and are going to be the one to beat, but those teams with the highest chances of doing so is probably one of those two. Um, as they've been consistent throughout the whole league phase, and they have overall generally relatively good stats for them. Or What can you tell me from the stat sheet? I mean, as just as much as what we've seen from the previous game in the Major League, uh, Challenger is not as close throughout the whole league, but definitely these two players are incredibly close. Uh, two and third in their respective position, going to try and make it as a higher um, position as much as possible to get more favorable matchups. Um, 76 games played for both of them, and 46 to 48 is the wins comparison between the two uh, teams. We um, are looking at some uh, very, very offensive-driven uh, 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 teams with much more goals uh, scored than uh, scores taken. So they're very, very efficient in attack, and they can keep their grounds. I I'm expecting a very close game between the two uh, teams because the stats are just looking very even throughout the, um, the, whole, uh, the whole match. Mm -hmm, definitely. And when we quickly look at the player stats, we see who is facing who here. We've got Buddha and Mr. Sings, who seem to be the two players who have played every game. And then Forum and Depot, who seem to switch up a little bit on who plays with them, with Form being more in there. And then we got the roster of Spark. That was um, completely overhauled. Uh, I think two days ago or something like mm -hmm. that, where Dispatcho wanted to make a new team, make a team he thinks could beat uh, Nezuka Gang in the playoffs, as that is the goal that we are, uh, that everyone is looking looking to do now, and he's decided to to cut uh, two of his team members to get EV onto the roster and try, try it with him. And I think today is the first test of, of the new roster. And if it is actually as good as um, Ignite would hope, uh, seeing how the whole history went. Yeah, it surely was a little bit of a controversial uh, decision from uh, Despacio, but Evie surely is a very, very good addition to the team. And together with them, it was signed... Uh, uh, H Street, I think it was, uh, which uh, is not showing in the stats right now because I'm not sure if he has played yet. But he might be the sub for the team if there's any need for him. Uh, looking at the stats, regardless of uh, roster changes, the two players to be uh, to keep their eyes on are Axel for Spark and Buddha, our fellow caster from uh, uh, Astro with uh, a very interesting uh, goals-to-game ratio and as well a very, very high saves-to-games ratio. So I'm really, really looking forward to these two players to show their ability in the game. 
good that I would say you can unleash the players or unleash the players onto the field <laughs> and we can go into game one perfectly on time I cannot believe we are finally one time in RSC uh, history on time on the schedule fantastic we really need Tenji as a broadcaster 100% of the time just saying <laughs> this this week I had another two hour broadcast and both games also started perfectly on time it's the Senji, we it's just the two Senji. <laughs> it's the Senji effect. But ready we are to start off with uh, the two interesting players, Buda and Axel, battling it out on the kickoff. Eevee already trying to show off his skill in the game, going for a demo and a solo play at the same time, almost making a good goal. Buda gets a good clear. Downfield is Mr. Jinx, sets it up. Sets it up very, very high. Despacio is there to block him. Ball into the back foot for the pass. Evie is there to read it. Tries to get a 50 on Jinx, which jumps straight over him and gets a very good control of the ball. Another counter attack opportunity for the blue team of Astro. Blocked by Despacio, which sets a lovely ball into the center. Evie doesn't make it quite yet. Buddha, great read under the corner to try and clear. Doesn't follow it up well enough to keep possession. It's a little bit of a ping pong looking situation with Astro not making uh, the best clears to keep possession of the ball. Just giving it away at every single clear. And the third time is the, char is the charm for Dispaccio, which every single time the ball was cleared, he was there, didn't make the contact with the ball, he won it so far, but now he managed to get an early lead for Sparks. Do you think that Sparks can keep up the lead uh, for the following uh, three and a half minutes that we have got in the game one here? I mean, I think it's a little bit too, too short for that decision. I think it could still go both ways. As it's a lead of one <laughs> and so much time, so I wouldn't I wouldn't say anything has been decided in this game yet. Yeah, of course it's a little bit early to try some conclusions to go to conclusions, but still we're seeing a very very uh, dominant performance in this two minutes of play with uh, Sparks keeping the um, uh, the pressure on Astro at all times. I think Astro got literally zero shots so far. So yeah, I confirm. So it looks like the incredibly offensive um, uh, plays from Spice is is making it um, as well have a very very good defensive side as well by keeping the pressure at all times. It's also being uh, the, their best tool for defense. You know, offense is the best kind of defense. That's what they say. Uh, then it's completely true. As long as you are about to score a goal, they don't score a goal most of the time. Oh, and that was nearly one hell of a calculated uh, play. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how calculated it was, but it still was very interesting play by Spice, which keep the pressure on the opposite side of their field. Buddha trying to break the pressure, but it's not making much of it. And Dispaccio reads the perfect pass from Evie on the backboard and sets the 2 0 from Spice. And now it's looking much like a more dominant performance of Spice, isn't it? Um, absolutely. Now that they are just nesting themselves in into the into the half of um. Astro, yeah, <laughs> just forgot the name there for a second. Um, they would really look stronger, and Astro didn't have that much chances, but this one here was saved by Axel. Yeah, I guess saved by Axel was even closer than it looked because he had one player from the Astro side behind him ready to bump him, and so it was a last second chance for him to make the save. So really, really clutch play by the uh, Spike player. Now Buddha for the blue side of Astro trying to make the clear. 
no one there to follow it up. Buda Long now in goal, 1v7 basically. Evil though comes in at the last second to try and make a breakout for his team. Goes for the bump! The third man with, I think it was Buda. Yeah, Buda going straight for the bump on the keeper. And he makes an open net for Mr. Jinx, which just has to aim for the goal. And that's a very, very, very good team play, which can bring Astro back into the game with one minute left. As Sporkton now gets back into the offense and just trying to say, hey boys, uh, you may have just scored one, but we're not here for getting scored on, we won score ourselves. And I think that's the right message they need to send out. Yeah, you really need the confidence and the aggression to intimidate your opponents as well. Not just keep up your own spirits, but also trying to bring down the opponent's ones with some offensive plays. That's not what they need, no, with this kind of poorly uh, organized defensive rotation from uh, Ebo and Zinx. Challenging way too early, Ebo being stuck on the post and the backboard as well. And a very good offensive play with Dispaccio taking an actric. Very, very good play. And very good game by Dispaccio so far, isn't it? Um, definitely. And so far, I would say, um, I've been informed that this team has beaten the Zuka gang um, yesterday uh, after the roster switch. So at the moment, it seems like it might have been the, the right decision. And therefore... Props, props to him. Props. Yeah, props to Dispaccio for building a team that works so well with him and that is able to uh, put some pressure on the uh, top three teams. Like, uh, we remember that Astro is still the number three in the league and Nazuka Gang being in, at the very top. This, uh, this team is looking like some scary side to face in the playoffs at the start of April. But now, Spark just let the ball drop to take a comfortable 3-2 lead into game 1 for the win. Honestly, going in, I was not expecting this much of a prominent display of skill from the orange team here of Sparks. Um, I was expecting much uh, less refined gameplay, more of a need to work out the chemistry of being a new team like uh, Axel. Uh, no, sorry, Eevee was signed just a couple of weeks ago, so, or actually couple a couple of days, days ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, but yeah, it's, uh, I wasn't expecting this much of a, uh, of, of a show of chemistry. They are playing perfectly together. Eevee, three assists, Dispaccio, three goals. Like, what else do you need? They have a great <laughs> anchor in Axel, which made a very last second save. Yeah, it's looking like a very solid team, isn't it? Um, definitely, they uh, they are doing a great job, and they show that it they work as a team. It was a last minute decision uh, on the roster, just in front of playoff spot. They are facing the two best teams apart from themselves, and therefore um, they are looking like they could take this as well as they won yesterday against the Zuka gang. And therefore they show, yeah, it, it was the right decision. It was controversial, yes, but it was uh, spoken from a team's point of view. Definitely the right one. Yeah, absolutely. And I have seen Ebo uh, leaving the match to let O, or not actually. He disconnected but then joined back in. So it's Buga now that's uh, subbing. Sorry about that. Uh, it's Buga that's subbing in with... Um, uh, form coming in in his stag. So Astro going for the sub and uh, keeping the actual sub of uh, Ebo with only uh, 10 games now uh, played with the team so far. Uh, it's certainly the player with uh, le uh, less experience in the team, uh, but form is uh, one of the best in the roster for them. So let's see how this change in balance for the team can work for Astro as they boom a ball away into the offensive side. Evo getting ready to set it in the center. It works. Since is not up in the air, ready to try and shoot it. Goes on the wall, tries to set it into the center. 
form is there to connect with the ball. Ebo not there to get a third touch, being the last man standing between the opposition and his own net. That's a very good save off the backboard. The ball is now set to the center by Evie and cleared by form. Gets onto the ball, the, um, the wall, but then uh, re uh, gives up on the com uh, on committing and leaves space uh, for Zinx that just misses the ball there. A little bit uncomfortable situation for Astro. Uh, Evie getting bumped three, four times by form. It's like another bump as well on another player on Sparks, but it's no third man followed by Zinx. In this situation again, looks like Astro is needing the third man to just slot the ball in uh, when it's bouncing in front of the net. But that's not going to happen because they're relying on a very tight uh, or a very strict rotation with the third man always staying back, isn't it, Sanjay? Yeah, definitely. And I think this won't help you strategically if you, if you keep your third man as far back as Mr. Sings was in that chance before where... Form was putting out all the players with various bumps. Um, I think it was Ibo that brought the ball on the backboard for Mr. Sings to get in. And in that time, Form was already getting back to the defense. And what a double tap by Axel here. <laughs> Axel with the insane play. But actually, this Pacio, amazing play as well with the, uh, the ball into the backboard with that kind of power and that kind of angle. is very, very good touch. And... You could see that all three player of Spikes in this situation were committed. Axel was the third man and went up regardless to get the ball off the off the center uh, from his teammate and just slot it in with a nasty double tap. Now Dispaccio with a very, very uh, interesting offense form gets the pinch into the wall. Now Ebo has got a chance in a 1v1 situation. Dispaccio is there to save things late on the challenge. Forming out, up the, uh, up in the air to try and get a double tap, doesn't make it, Evo sets it into the center, Zinx, another time, stuck in the back, this man really needs to amp his aggression for the sake of his team, doesn't it? Um, most certainly, um, maybe just to finish my thought before, um, before they, uh, scored, uh, as to, I think Astro just needs to loosen up a little bit and get more pressure up front because to always stay back won't help him as they now need to score more than they needed to score before. Yeah, being on the back foot is never good for your morale and your uh, confidence in a, in a game, but... We have just seen Form doing the same kind of mistake, so I, I wonder if it's not just a, a policy in the team to just have a third man back to not be taken by surprise by the offensive probably of Spark. Regardless, I don't think that's the solution for them, and we have seen from Spark instead that their third man is ready to offend and attack at all times. Now Ebo almost gets a oh. crazy double tap and Form a very fine angle with a very, very good uh, aerial play here. And that was much harder than it looks from that angle, just right be uh, beneath the ball, reach it higher than your opponent and slide it under the crossbar. Very, very good play by the man. Absolutely. And it just shows what, what a vital role he has in this team, as I think he's uh, one of the lower rated for compared to the skill players in Challenger. Um, undervalued, that's the word I was ooh, looking for. <laughs> ooh, 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 this is very interesting play by Evie that jumps the third man, but now in the rotation, a great save there. I think it was from uh, uh, Minx. Form. What yes, a play. Form. form, oh yeah, it's always form, of course. Uh, how can I think of anyone else is up for that? Uh, form, like being the one man team today with uh, 332 points more than the rest of the team and to stay on what we were saying earlier means just to put it into thought for everyone at home not seeing the score as uh, as often as we, as we can as casters only has had 28 points in the span of five full minutes of play so that means that he's that been one? on the back foot at all times but that is a this great is rocket league
<laughs> I had to. A great counter attack, just inside. Oh, what a play by the Astro with the zero seconds wing with Ebo on the attack of the pass by the man himself with almost no points up until the last second and gets the assist from his backwards position. A great, a great clear from Zinx and it works wonders for Astro which take game two unexpectedly with a very underwhelming performance that works very well in the end for them. Definitely and I'm happy I finally casted a match with a zero second goal. That is just <laughs> oh, beautiful. I could finally say this is Rocket League. <laughs> you were waiting for it for years, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. <laughs> and uh, I'm informed that this patch needs another five minutes uh, to set up a few things. So we are stuck here talking about these two games we have just seen. And despite having Zinx not being at the top of his game, for sure, only 90 points in this final of game two. We are seeing him being the defensive anchor that Astro needed to try and be more comfortable in attack. Both goals went thanks to him uh, uh, being in the back. Like Jinx was in the back in a situation where Ebo and um, and Form were in attack and they uh, double challenge and try to pass two or three people on their own, uh, making a two with three work for them. And uh, afterwards, Jinx is staying in the back to hold their grounds against the Sparks, catch the ball off uh, in front of uh, of the empty Sparks side, which we're not expecting the zero seconds uh, play with uh, Ebo just having to doink the ball <laughs> on top of his car to keep it alive and not let it drop. So, uh, despite being not a fan of Jinx, uh, play style and this strategy from Astro I mean the numbers are speaking in their favors aren't they um uh, yes the numbers do uh but I think just based on what we've seen on the pitch I still see Spark having an advantage over Astro mm. just yeah because, me too actually just because I think Spark works better as a team and with Astro. I don't know why they've um, subbed out Buddha, for example. Uh, I think he and Form together are way more dangerous threat to the opponents as only one of them, if, if you uh, uh, understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I absolutely agree. I expect Buddha and Form to be an absolute masterclass of Rocket League in... Uh, uh, Challenger League, but I um, I wasn't really uh, expecting Ebo to stay in, but checking out how little games uh, he has, he might have to play a lot, if not all of the games, to make the 20% rule, maybe? Uh, I'm not quite sure if uh, he is just a, a, a late sub, and the fourth man slot was already covered for enough games or not, but still, maybe that's the, the reason. I mean, this team has now built um, a team that they think can get the, the win in playoffs. They would not have gotten that team if they wouldn't know that uh, all, all the, all the sub-games were already played. So I think we've got all the players in now with Haroldinho uh, coming in for this patch show. And uh, I wonder who this Haroldinho is. Uh, I, I, we actually should have the, the real name in the tag usually. But yeah, it works out. Uh, it's just a sub. Okay, I guess it's uh, H... Um, uh, HP, I think it was the one I was mentioning earlier. Uh, the, the H checks out H Street. Yeah, there he is. I'm confirmed by EV. So H Street subbing in for Dispaccio. I am very um, curious to see how this man dies, being the one with zero stats for the night. 
So I'm very, very curious to see what he has in our hands. Uh, now, the man himself going for a very interesting uh, clear uh, from a very difficult angle. Uh, Astro trying and making an early aggression with Form and Ebo into the center. Now the ball is in the center to Ebo, and he gets the shot on target. E Axel cannot get the save last second. Eevee not making the counter with the ball he wanted, and it's an early lead for Astro with Form and Ebo. Definitely, I think uh, without having Dispatcher on the team, Spark look weaker. Uh, and they Definitely already got get in their second goal after 33 seconds. And with that, uh, yeah, I see this as an absolute win from uh, Astro's side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would see it as an absolute win for Astro as well. Uh, it looks like Dispaccio was the holder for the team. Like, he was surely the one more gifted mechanically that we have seen so far uh, for Spark. And his offensive prowess was uh, shown to be uh, very, very essential uh, to Spark. And now I doubt that we can see as much of a show uh, from Spark as you're seeing uh, uh, in game uh, one and also in game two, which was much tighter game than what we've seen so far. Uh, I expect Astro to uh, cruise through this game three. And hopefully for Sparks, Dispaccio can come back in uh, for game four. Now, Ebo getting a tasty angle, slamming it into the post. And Zinx now finally off of his third man position, ready to capitalize on a very tasty ball into the center from Ebo. Yeah, and it just shows how, how dominant um, this... Uh, Astro can be over this spark and a little prediction for playoffs by me if those troubles come up with this patch here um, and his technical difficulties it's gonna be hard hard road to, to the open challenger yeah before this situation we are seeing right now I was certain that Sparks were the favorite for the playoffs but now uh, I'm not quite sure. We are going to have to uh, watch the actual players that will be coming in April, early April, uh, here on the RSCU Twitch. Uh, so stay tuned for that because we'll have all the players back to back, uh, day after day, for um, uh, all of the leagues. And they're going to be absolutely tasty. And I cannot wait. But those kind of showing now, Harold or A Street, last man standing to try and defend Spark from Astro, but an amazingly precise shot. Surgical touch into the top corner from Ebo leaves no escape for the orange side. Yeah, and as we were just speaking about playoffs, make sure to, to be here and witness it. As we've got a little surprise packed for those playoffs, so uh, stay tuned and stay interested in the league. Always stay interested in RSC. We got the best players and the best casters alongside me again, Senji Buda, in the back of this team, but he's also one of our best play, uh, casters. Also, stay tuned on Monday for RSC cast which uh, is our weekly um, roundup format. <laughs> yeah, roundup, <laughs> thank you. And uh, tomorrow as well, another stream, if I'm not wrong. Oh, actually, I think it was cancelled because of a lack of games, unfortunately. But we'll have every single day a lot of streams interested for you, and you always have to be very, 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 very... Uh, careful on when we go live because playoffs are always closer and we're gonna see a lot of fights into this league now a great opportunity for axel which doesn't connect with the ball properly to make a goal oh free jump for form that was ready to receive the pass from Ebo. this is freestyle mood from the astro which are making havoc wrecking havoc here in the defense of spark now though axel with a solo play against uh, the whole defense of Astro, making sure they don't 
be too cocky, even now ready to shoot, but he's taken over by Zinx, which is looking much more offensively driven than we've seen in game one and two. H6, aka Arrojinho on the ball into the right side. Bounces off the corner with Evie with a great pass actually to Axel in the center. I am impressed with this control by Evie. Double tap pass and Axel is very quick on the read. Yeah, just, just a beautiful goal there. And it, it just shows how good this Challenger League actually is. Yeah, every league here is extremely uh, skillful. Like, there's no player in RSC, even in the Prospects and Challengers Leagues, there's a lot of players that can absolutely shame me for their uh, mechanical prowess. And it's, it's really, really good showing uh, and always entertaining to watch. But now Zinx doesn't make show of his mechanical prowess with this touch. Setting up a very tasty ball for Spikes, which is not capitalized. Howled onto the corner. Gets a very good pass into the center for Axel to read. Gets the double tap, maybe it does. But it's not on target. Evie tries to make a consolation goal with two seconds left, but he doesn't make it. And Evo tries to get the deadly must flick on zero seconds. Does not connect with the ball, though. And it's still a good win for one for Astro. Which win game three on a 2 1 lead. Definitely. And what I'm now looking forward to is uh, is Dispatcher coming back for Spark? If so, I think uh, we're going to have a 2 2 here. If not, then I'm, I would say Astro's going to take this, uh, make it a 3 1, and therefore attack the. The second spot that uh, Spark has at the moment. And Minty actually uh, wants to make sure that everyone knows that if Astro make the 3-1, this is number one spot in the league assured for uh, his team, uh, Mega Min Cult, I think. Uh, so, yeah, it's, um, it's looking like uh, Spark has to try and win this one regardless of this Faccio coming back which doesn't look like it's a possibility because uh, I haven't seen him uh, come back so yeah, yeah, it's, looking, it's looking rough and we've seen Ebo, Form and Zinx again on the Astro side so this is roster confirms on both sides and we're ready to go for game for I hope for Sparks to show out a little bit of a more uh, team play uh, show, like a, a little bit of extra chemistry, um, because otherwise this is going to be an Astro show again. Definitely. I just wanted to mention uh, Minty is not on Megumin Cult. That would be two tiers oh. above in Major. <laughs> oh, the, sorry. I was... The <laughs> Challenger Waifu is a uh, Nezuka gang. Oh, Nezuka gang, sorry, so, yeah, my bad about it. No uh, I got I got confused with the earlier league, uh, but regardless... Um, and I got yeah, to it's say still, hello to still the, Yeah, it's still the play is very, very open, and Spark have to uh, win this game to try and get themselves into uh, first slot, and maybe also confirm their second slot, because uh, if Astro win this, they might end up still the second slot from uh, from Spike. Yeah. Um, now at the moment, uh, both teams uh, would be on the same amount of games won if this would mm -hmm. go to a three-one. And yep. I'm not quite certain how the direct uh, confrontation was the first time around. So, if someone could help me there in chat, that would be great. But overall, this is definitely going to be a clutch decision between basically second to fourth uh, place in Challenger. It's two and two last time, so uh, if Astro were to win this game and keep the same amount of wins as Sparks, this would be uh, a lead for Astro in the league. But regardless, it's not looking like so because Spark 
has a very convincing lead after one minute and a half and a very very good goal by Axel with uh, some interesting uh, team play that we were not seeing in the earlier game so maybe the chemistry is sticking in for Spark. Yeah I hope it is it's it's really great to see that maybe the first game for Heraldino was just the typical warm-up game <laughs> As he had to come in, I think at a moment's notice to to help out the team, and it seems to work now. They got a second goal in, and they're leading by two. A very uh, like fortunate goal by Evie that uh, reads the clear from uh, his uh, reads about the ball center um, from his opponent and gets a clear straight into the opponent's goal. Uh, very lucky, but still very good challenge by the man which leads his team for points so very good showing by Evie and Axel in particular with one goal each for the spark side now another interesting attack from sparks blocked by form and Ebo trying to get a pass in place Ebo there to receive the pass from his teammate Axel now on the counter attack tries to pick Jinx which doesn't bite Evie very good clear gets a reset on the ceiling doesn't make much of it with no boost Axel that's a clear that it's also probably a pass to form. Rigs it, but doesn't make great connection. Haroldinho is late on the ball. Axel, first man to challenge Jinx in the corner. Evie, face Ebo in a very, very um, weird situation for Spike where they cannot get out of their own corner. We were seeing that earlier on the second goal as well, but they managed to get a power clear into the opponent's net. So it's not all to lose for Spikes in this situation. Form. Into the corner goes for Ebo, which wins a 50 against Tarotinho. The ball bounces though into open grounds for Evie. Well read by defense of Astro. It's a little bit of a ping pong situation with Jinx getting a demo and control the ball for form. Gets a very good air dribble across the field. Doesn't make contact off the double tap on the wall. A streak, aka Tarotinho. On the opposite side, doesn't receive the ball because his teammate misses, unfortunately. Now Axel doesn't go for the back pass to him. Forming instead. Gets it over. Very, very risky touch from Aurodinho himself, which ends up passing to his teammate, fortunately. Almost an own goal. Axel now, though, keeps the pressure up for his team. Aurodinho's there. Ball ends up into the corner. Very tense situation. Spark is trying to hold the fork there, but it's a double commit and a bump as well from form. And the goal is open completely for Jinx, which ends up being the goal scorer again for his team. Yeah, and <clears throat> who else than he who, who is, has the possibility to, to get in there? So, well done. And now 40 seconds to tie this game up and go into an overtime. Do you think Astro's going to do it? Oh, they sh uh, certainly can. 40 seconds is a lot of time in Rocket League, while normally in life would be barely anything. Ebo now is trying to make sure that his team gets into this overtime. It's broken, though, this attack by the Spark defense. Jinx gets a very tasty touch, which doesn't do land into the net of Sparks so that doesn't work unfortunately for uh, Astro 12 seconds on the clock 10 now form onto the ball gets the ball into the backboard it's rolling up Jinx is late under the challenge now Axel is trying to make the clear away into the danger zone and the ball drops for a 2-2 two and two finish in favor of Spark because that was a clutch recovery after Gispaccio had to leave uh, into game three and yeah very very good show from the orange team here to try and uh, get back into the uh, second spot position which would have been otherwise uh, stolen by Astro definitely and I have to say huge props to to Haroldinha for just to get in here at a moment's notice uh, take a game to get warm to get used to the to, to the opponents, to the own team. And then he was there and they delivered and they beaten a very strong looking Astro. So, huge props to him. 
Yeah, reminder, this was the battle between second and third in the Prospect League, so it surely was a battle of grits and uh, um, determination for the lead uh, of those positions. But regardless, now the question to check out who to interview has come. So who do you think was the best player for each team? And would you rather have one of them or both of them, Sanji? Hmm, this is uh, definitely an interesting question as I think Form would be a good candidate as, yeah, as he was kind of the standard player for uh, Astro. Yeah, I agree and the same goes for Spark with Eevee. In my opinion, he showed up very, very good uh, um Good prowess along the the whole uh, matchup, and I wasn't expecting him to play this well, honestly. So I am absolutely impressed by the man. And do you think we can have both, or do you want to just interview form instead? Um, I've now written form, and EV was the thing you said. Yeah. Good. Then I'll go and search him. <laughs> okay, we'll have both then. Uh, as is custom for um, a draw matchup. Okay, uh, I'm, chat I'm was to put someone in chat. Can can you write EV to get into the lowest VC in the Discord? Uh, in the meanwhile, we have a form that has joined us. So uh, good game, mate. Uh, well, well done with uh, your team. You probably had. The upper end coming into game four. I uh, probably were expecting a little bit more, but a very tight matchup for uh, the league of the league. And uh, uh, you're still up there trying to conquer um, second place in the league. So, uh, how did the game go for you, and what did you expect coming into game four as well? Um, I mean, the game was all round. Uh, scrims was very difficult for us because we had to just scrim around them. Like team of Buddha's friends basically and uh, mm. it was a very missing match in comms as well as Ebo was uh, muted during guard scrims so it was like it, it was very hard to choose our roster we were meaning to play so we did switch out a lot and uh, for the fourth game it, we did have some problems with comms so, which did cause us to concede but overall it was a good game and we got a draw from it. Yeah, regardless of a few problems, this was surely a great show uh, from Astro. And uh, during the game, we were wondering, uh, uh, Buddha subbed out from, uh, the, um, uh, from the team uh, in your favor. And surely uh, that was not a bad decision because you showed up uh, to the place. And clearly, uh, we're uh, like one of the best teams, uh, one of the best players, sorry, for the team. But we were wondering why it was uh, uh, Ebo, which is one of your uh, less uh, present players, uh, playing yet. So I was wondering if maybe uh, you are letting him play for the 20% rule. Uh, that is one of the main reasons. And it's also, we find him as most mostly when on the day he does show up and he does score some good goals. Uh, so he is a good person. Like a player to have on the team, especially for his mechanical ability and yeah. uh, offensive ability. But uh, but that is the main reason the twenty percent rule. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely was impressed with Ibo. Uh, looking at his stats, I was not expecting uh, such a consistent kind of play. Uh, of course, for a sub in Challenger as well, I was not really uh, having high expectation for the man, but he really really showed up and did very very well and i'm impressed and did really nothing uh left really nothing to to be desired on the matter of uh, his uh gameplay uh so kudos to evo and uh kudos to you guys to let him go and have his uh, show on stream as well uh it's something that in some other teams maybe that would not be completely considered um considered for the for the sub um do you have any questions for form, uh, Sanji? Um, yeah, how... Apart from you now looking to get into playoffs, how, how are you planning on finishing this season? 
Um, not really sure, to be honest. We've, most of our season has consisted of 2-2 games, so it will be exciting to see how, how we perform in playoffs. And I, I'm really not sure how it's going to go, but, but we're hoping to do well right now. Okay, and something a little bit more uh, personal for you. Uh, and maybe good information for all your players. Uh, are you coming back next season as GM or are you going to step down and uh, pursue the league only as player? Um, I am hoping to say as GM next season. I, I would like it. I did have a nice run this season. Especially with a, a lot of problems at the start of the season, but as as we go on, I did I did start to get the hang of it as it was. By I did have like two days prior to being there, so I I am hoping. Yeah, I had my whole challenger team planning completely overthrown by you getting GM, <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. It, it it worked. I wouldn't say it worked out good, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have to steal the hopes question now. What was the highlight of the match for you, Form? Um, I'm really got a highlight. <laughs> um, on, both, on both sides, uh, even something I you... think I think the main highlight was the the moment. This this really hyped all of us up was uh, when we scored the final goal in zero seconds. With a bang across the map from Zinx into Ebo, and he just taps it into the goal. I think that was the highlight for all of us on our side. Absolutely. For for me Absolutely. too. Not gonna lie. Um, yeah, I suggest you watch the vod for this stream because we had a very this is Rocket League moment from Zinxy. <laughs> so uh, this is gonna be surely entertaining for you guys to watch back if you want that. Uh, but thank you so much for for staying here with us in this interview and good luck with you in playoffs and in the uh, upcoming league games thank you so much see you definitely see you um well that is gonna probably end this stream soon just one thing i wanted to mention for everyone who's still here in stream um please go to the admin applications and use your votes there's nothing worse than having the option to decide over the future of something and then when the decision comes out and you don't really like it you're thinking ah, i could have made something different and give each applicant a fair chance look into the essays that we've posted and yeah uh, remember you've got four votes you use hopefully all of them <laughs> that's the probably the best you can do and well, I uh, just wanted to say that. Make sure you do it. As yeah, something. absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Everyone, go vote. Uh, you also have a link in the League Notices uh, channel on the Discord channel. Uh, you have a form there to vote. Uh, the names candidates for admins are Aikion, Sato, Franz, Yannick, and of course, here in the booth with me and in the broadcasting double duty tonight, there's also Senji, which is candidating for admin. So all of you go vote for whoever you think is more um, ri righteous for the admin uh, role in the RCEU. And uh, it really, really is important because it defines the future of the, um, the league in general. And so please go and vote. But regardless of voting, I have to thank you all for watching and for being here on stream with me and with Senji. And I will wave you goodbye. And I'll tell you to stay tuned on RCU. Follow, subscribe if you can. Remember, Twitch Prime subs, you have the right to subscribe for free. So if you have that, please, you can the community a lot. Um, and also... Uh, stay tuned for Monday night at 9 p.m., I believe, Central European time. We should have the RS cast uh, with Hops for sure. I think Mickey and Archeon will be there too. Uh, you as well, Senji? 
Uh, we we haven't decided yet who is going to take it. Probably, probably, but it, it usually gets the roster. <laughs> uh, but we'll have the decision about it uh, later on. Uh, stay tuned, and uh, I'll see you around. Goodbye. Goodbye.